All right, so in this video, I'm just gonna go over some aspects of the code that we did so far. I'm not gonna be writing anything new in this video. So if you do understand everything up to this point, clearly you might even wanna skip this one and go to the next one, it's up to you. But just a general walkthrough of understanding what are different parts of the code and why do we need them where we need them. So the first part is that we have parts of our code that are what I call the server side. So the server side codes are basically anything that's not a part of this user form. We have this and this. Those are the two parts here that are our server side codes. So when you talk about server side codes, what that really means is that anything you need that interacts with Google services directly, it has to be server side. So for example, if you need to add a new line to your spreadsheet or read data from your spreadsheet, see this is interacting with Google spreadsheets. So examples of those would be if I go to, for example, this Funks GS, we made two functions here. One is add new row. What this function does, it basically just adds a new line to our spreadsheet. And then we have another function here, get dropdown array, which again connects to our spreadsheet app. Notice a pattern here, we're connecting to the spreadsheet app, we're connecting to a spreadsheet app again. We're getting this worksheet, dropdown options right here, which is this one. And we basically just read the data and return it back. So the part that we read from the spreadsheet is happening here and the part that we write to the spreadsheet happens here. So anything that will in some way change our spreadsheet or get data from our spreadsheet has to be on a server side and we need a function for that. Now, if I go to this load user form GS part, see here we have three functions and again, if you look at these functions, there's gonna be a common thing. We're interacting with Google services. So for example, like this create menu, we go again to spreadsheet app, which is our spreadsheet. And basically we create a menu in that spreadsheet app. And on open is a special method that just runs when you open the spreadsheet in this case. So again, that's a, uh, method that's directly connected to our spreadsheet. So that's just gonna automatically run and that's gonna run this, which is where we again interact with our spreadsheet to add this menu here to be able to open our user form. And then finally, the last thing here is the HTML service. Again, one of the Google services we're interacting with, it has to be on our backend side. We have the HTML service, which creates the HTML. And then in the end of the day, again, keep in mind, we still interact with our spreadsheet app, we get the user interface and we add a sidebar. So that's the entire backend so far. So all we have is five simple functions. Loading the form creates the menu. We have this on open that basically just runs that function. Finally, we have these two functions. One adds a new row to our spreadsheet and then this other one just reads data from our spreadsheet. So all of these now has to somehow interact with the actual form. So the form is basically this thing and the form, although it looks like it's a part of the spreadsheet, it's really disconnected from the spreadsheet itself. It's like a foreign element. So what's interesting about this form is that this form runs in your browser directly. So any code you have in the form will run directly inside of your browser. However, all these functions that I was just talking about, like those five functions, what I'm calling server side, they all go to Google servers and this code runs on Google servers themselves. We just send this function to Google server and it executes it for us and it basically returns something back. Now, anything that we go to this user form HTML, that's this form that although looks like it's a part of this, it's a disconnected thing in your browser. Like think about you made a separate website and 
we want this disconnected thing to somehow now interact with our spreadsheet and the back end and the Google server itself. So in order for us to do that, we have this HTML, CSS, that has nothing to do with the actual working part of the script. But if I keep scrolling down in this user form, at some point we did our scripts. So all of the scripts, some of these we're importing from libraries, but they're all not running on Google server. They're running directly in your browser right here. And we also have this script that we wrote here. Again, this is inside of the user form. And that's also all of this code is going to run directly in your browser within this form that we built here. Now, anytime we need to somehow interact from this form to the actual Google services, we have to do it using this command, Google script run. So that's really the only opening between this user form and the actual backend that we have. When you do this Google script run, you can run one of the functions that you've created on the backend side. So again, remember the backend side code is whatever's in one of these files. So for example, if I would like to run this function, we can do that by doing this Google script run and then calling that function add new row, which is that function that we have in the backend. That allows this opening from that form to the actual backend side, because in the backend side, you could do a lot of different things, including deleting some of your spreadsheets. So we don't want this form to be able to do all those things if somebody just goes in and changes up the form. So we just want to just give certain things that we want to allow from this form to happen. And those certain things are the openings you give in here by creating your functions, right? For example, we made add new row. We also have this get dropdown. We want to be able to go get information from that spreadsheet, but not any information. We just want to give this particular information, just this data. And again, we can do that by simply calling that function. If I go to that form again with Google script run and then the name of the function over here. Now in the middle here, we have this with success handler, which is the way you can handle when that function runs and it returns some information back. So if the function runs with no errors, then what's going to happen is whatever function you pass to this with success handler, like after submit, it's automatically gonna run. So for example, in this case, we have this function that happens when we click the button. So when it runs all of this, at some point, it's gonna run this if all of that was successful on top. And it's gonna try to add a new row, and that is this function that we made here. Now, if this function goes through fine without any errors, then automatically, whatever the return value is, which in this case is true, is gonna be passed to this with success handler to this function that you pass here to after submit. And after submit is this function over here, which means effectively this E at that point is going to become this return value, which is true, if everything goes well. If it doesn't go well, this is never gonna get triggered and this is not gonna be passed to this. So again, any interaction we do with our backend should have that Google script run. If I look through this code, see, this is the beginning, we have it once here when we add a new row in this line. And if I keep scrolling down, we have this one. And that is running that get dropdown array option, which is where we go and read this information from the spreadsheet and return it back to our user interface so we can use it for our dependent dropdown in this case. So if I keep scrolling down in this code, there is no other mentions of Google script run. So the only two times in this code that we interact with our backend are this Google script runs. The rest of all of these runs in the form itself, in your browser. It doesn't run on Google server. So the order in which we did all of this, we started by first 
making sure that something happens when the page loads. The way we know when the page loads is by having this event listener DOM content loaded. So when that happens, it's gonna automatically fire this function after sidebar loads. And that function, if I go higher, it's this one. So when the content here loads, it automatically triggers this. And if you remember what this is, it runs this backend function, get dropdown array, which is this one. And what it does, it goes to our spreadsheet, reads the information and gets an array of values from here. Once we get that, remember whatever the success is, if that runs successfully, it's gonna run this function after dropdown array returned, which is this one. And that's gonna get here whatever we get back from here. And the thing we get back from here is what the return is. And the return is that actual array. So if I go back here, so now what we do in here, we basically just store it in a global array here, which we declared outside of all of this so we can globally access this. And the reason we want to globally access this is because we don't want to keep calling the script every time to be able to get that list. Because if we didn't do this, we would have to keep running this get dropdown array function every single time that you change something here to go get the options, which would be, first of all, very slow, and it would also put a lot of strain on a server, and you would have to use a lot of calls for this. So we put it in here so we can use it later on without having to call that service anymore. And then the rest, we just basically fill up all of these dropdowns step by step. Finally, when all of that is done, we remove that loading box that we have in here, see when this loads, we have that thing that shows up for a second there. So at this point, it's gonna stop doing whatever it was doing and nothing is gonna happen until there is some sort of interaction. And those interactions are gonna be all of these other event listeners. So we have when somebody clicks on a button, do something. When somebody changes this category dropdown, do something. And then finally, when somebody changes this item name dropdown, again, do something. So that's the way we control this flow. And finally, we have this main button, which is when we click on the button. And when we click on it, that's our click event here, we want to run this after button clicked, which is our function right here that I was talking about just a little bit ago when I was illustrating this Google script run. So I just wanted to clarify all of this to make sure that you understand that there is the front side of this, which is where most of our code really is. And then there is the backend side. And you have to always remember, anytime you're trying to interact with a Google service, you need some backend function to be able to do this. And then you're gonna be able to run that function using this Google script run from the front side. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.